Hi, this is Luke King there from Realty X Lite. Um, this video is going to be a complete VFX workflow of how I blend CGI and green screen footage using just Blender. But we're not going to any specific detail and instead, this is like a walkthrough of all the process that you need to learn. I try to stay out of modeling as far as I can. I only model uh, those things that are absolutely necessary and I can't proceed without it. And the only model that I made here is this wooden pavement, uh, which is just a simple cube and then I resized it a little bit. And all the rest of these 3D models are pre-made assets and some of them are from assets library like Quixel Bridge, CG Trader, Free3D, Turbo Squid, Archive 3D, Sketchfab and etc. There's so many websites that you can find uh, 3D models and maybe you have to pay for some of them. So this project file will be available on my Patreon so they can just download and play around with this file. Now if I scroll my timeline here, our character is moving inside this scene and I can change the camera angle from front to back and by doing this I need to change the plane and the lighting as well. This is because the lighting that I use for one angle might not necessarily work for another angle. So I tweak the rotation for the light a little bit for this shot. And then if I feel like the scene is a bit too dark, then uh, you can just simply increase exposure in the color management tab instead of changing the sunlight intensity. Now let's start breaking down the scene layer by layer. First, I disable all this particle system because uh, this is taking me a bit of computing power and it makes it a little bit laggy. The first thing I did here is modeling this wooden pavement and this is just a simple cube. I add a little bit of bevel on the side and this red line is just a seam uh, that I use to unwrap the mesh. Then all I have to do uh, for the rest of the wood is just to duplicate this one scale it and then rotate it simple as that here we can see that i have three camera angle which i animated a little bit because i don't want it to be stills and i want to have a little bit of movement and after that we have this layout i download these assets from megascan itself and you might already know that megascan has a very wide range of 3d scan library uh, which is free for Unreal, but not for Blender. Uh, which means if you wanna render using Blender, then you have to pay for their subscription fee, which I believe is truly worth it if you are planning to do more VFX works. And all these materials are also from Megascan itself. You can get up to 8K texture, which I don't think you need for this kind of shot. Even 2K will do the job. And if you look at this ocean, uh, this is just a simple plane. And I cut it out like this because um, initially I try to simulate the water using physics and I end up using a lot of computing power so I um, did this using material instead. So this entire ocean can be just four vertices and it's gonna work exactly the same. I did the same thing for the ground as well. I use sculpting tools uh, for this one because I don't want to make it completely flat. I lift up some part and lower some areas just to avoid that super flat looking ground. When I'm done with the sculpting then I start adding some HDRI into the scene. But right now this is looking super flat and I'll have to add some sunlight here later. So this is just to see the scene in general. If you take a look at this ground, this is a very simple node setup. I use this grass texture from Blender Guru's Grass Essential add-on and this ground texture is also from the same. And I use texture paint to mask out some parts so that I can blend between the grass and the ground. Then I use a gradient map to darken the intersection point between the ground and the ocean. I use a color ramp to squeeze the value and then I mixed it with these black materials. And then when I combine these two, then we get the result like this. Now if we take a look at this wood texture, this is just a simple procedural texture. And here we can see that I'm using the same gradient map to darken the intersection point. And all I use for the wood texture is this mask grave texture. I squeezed it along the Y axis and then instead of this black and white value, I use color ramp and introduce some color. Then I feel like the overall color is a bit too saturated so I use this hue and saturation node to desaturate it a little bit. 
and also for the roughness I simply raise the black value so that this wood doesn't look too reflective I use this same texture for the bombs as well and that's all for the wood materials right now the ground is still looking too flat so I download these rocks from Megascan and then I start populating them across the scene all I did here is just scale and rotate these rocks and place them according to the sculpted ground and the texture are already there along with the mesh so you don't have to worry about that then I start adding this sunlight and what I always try to accomplish when I add any light is you know to get a sense of depth to the scene so we can get this by rotating our light source in a way that we can see the shapes of our 3d meshes so if I simply light this scene from the front then I will not get the shape of my 3d models very well because there will be no shadow at all this is why it's equally important to maintain the shadow and the highlight in our scene once I kind of feel okay with the lighting, then I start adding these plants as particle system in these rocks. And there's nothing fancy about these settings. All I do here is change the emitter to hair and then scroll down to render. Change the render as to collection and then use the plants collection. I did exactly the same for the rest of the rocks and then apply this particle system to all of them. and this is how it looks with the plants and honestly the scene feels looks okay to me but this is too perfect you know I need some more stuff to make it a bit messier so I find some more trees online and then use them here I believe this is still looking a bit too clean but I keep it like this anyway and if you look at the water uh, we can see the texture and let me quickly explain what's going on here I use this wave texture that comes with Blender and all I have to do is animate this X location so that the texture will not remain in the same place uh, throughout the frame. Then I use it as a bump then I connect it to the glass shader and that's it. Now if I switch to this close up shot, I don't have to do anything for this one. I just need to import our key out character using images plane. Before I do that, let me explain how we shot this green screen footage. We can see that I placed these two light source at the left and this is because if I enable the character in our scene and here we can see the circular hat, this CGI hat and if you pay closer attention to how the sunlight hits the edge and then fades out. This is like a cylinder if we approximate it and so hard legs. So meaning all we have to do is relight our character in a way that the light hits the edge of her leg and then fades out like the CGI. But this has to apply across all her body not just her legs. But I only bought this to light because I, I don't believe that we're gonna need more than that uh, which we do. And this one will look much better if we have one more light and light up the top half of our body. Then I just let her sit on this table and then record the footage. Then I kill the footage using Blender and then I export it as MOV5 with Alpha. Uh, it's gonna be the same if you export as PNG. Then I import it using Images Plane add-on. Now let's take a look at how I simulate the trees. Here we can see that the leaves of these trees are moving and the way I did is using Displacement Modifier. I go to edit mode and select all the leaves and then I add that to a new vertex groups. This is why all the leaves turns red if we look at it through vertex weight. Then I go to modifier and then I add displacement modifier. Change the coordinates to object and then I select the object that will be used for the displacement uh, which is this leaf displacer. If I go to the graph editor. We can see that I use a generator modifier uh, to translate the position and this translation is controlled by this lower coefficient value. If I increase this number then the wind will blow much stronger and vice versa and I did exactly the same for the grass as well. So that's pretty much how I set up the whole scene and please consider subscribing this channel if you like what you just saw. The complete long format tutorial will be available on my Patreon. So if you are serious about VFX and want to make a living out of it, uh, feel free to join my Patreon and then support this channel. So thank you so much for watching and then I'll see you in the next one.